Hello, today we're going to be working on multiplying polynomials with the box method, which means we're going to be doing a very visual way to do this. Now, don't forget, you can always go back to the ways that I've shown you before with multiplying polynomials by just distributing, or expanding is another word here. So you could certainly distribute the x through to both sets of parentheses, or both pieces in that parentheses, and distribute the 2 to both pieces in the parentheses. But like I said, I want to show you a more visual way today to do this, and it kind of helps you keep things organized, especially as some of these polynomials get bigger. Okay, so what you want to do is go ahead and draw yourself a rectangle, and mine looks good enough. Um, because the first set of parentheses has two terms, I'm going to go ahead and split it in half this way, and because the second set of parentheses has two terms, I'm going to split it in half then the other way. And then what you're going to do is you're going to take and write out your two terms, so x and then plus 2, plus 2. Then at the top I'm going to write x and then minus 4. So the side here represents my first parenthesis, the top represents my second parenthesis. Order doesn't matter, but I tend to do it this way just to be consistent. So now we're going to multiply these. So x times x gives me an x squared x times negative 4 gives me a negative 4x. x times positive 2, or positive 2 times x, gives me a positive 2x. And positive 2 times negative 4 gives me a negative 8. Okay, so those are basically my four terms that I get when I multiply these together. So I'm going to end up with x squared minus 4x plus 2x minus 8. Okay, then you'll notice here in the middle, just like we talked about again the last time, we have like terms here and here. So when I combine those together, I'll get a final answer of x squared minus 2x minus 8. And that would be my final answer. And if you've learned the acronym FOIL, you can certainly do that too. I mean, it doesn't really matter. Um, one thing I will have you notice, let me highlight this in a different color, is our like terms fall here and here. And that's typically going to be the case. They're going to be on a diagonal. I can't say always, but typically I think that's a pretty good thing that you can recognize. Okay. The next problem gets a little bit bigger and a little bit uglier. So if you were to try to do this out, you'd have to distribute the x to all three of these terms and distribute the negative 2 to all three of these terms. Oof, you're likely to lose stuff. I know I always do. So again, I'm going to draw out a rectangle. I'm going to make this one a little bit longer since I have three terms instead of two. So because my first set of parentheses is two terms, I'm going to divide it in half. And then because this one has three terms, I'm going to divide this one into three fairly equal pieces. Okay, again, I'm going to write out what I'm multiplying. So on the side, I'm going to write x and then minus 2. And then along the top, I'm going to write x squared minus 3x and then plus 1. And you don't want to make sure you lose any of your signs. I try to put mine in just to make sure I remember. Um, although I never usually put them on the first ones. <laughs> I just noticed. <laughs> okay, let's go through and multiply each piece. So x times x squared gives me an x to the third. x times negative 3x gives me negative 3x squared. x times positive 1 gives me a positive 1x. Negative 2 times x squared gives me negative 2x squared. Negative 2 times negative 3x gives me a positive 6x. And negative 2 times negative 1, or positive 1, gives me a negative 2. Okay, again, let's go through and look for like terms. So I've got a like term here and here, and then I've got a like term here and here. So when I combine all of my like terms together, the x cubed doesn't have one, so I'm just going to write that by itself. I combine my negative 3x squared and my negative 2x squared. I get a negative 5x squared. I combine my positive 1x and positive 6x. That gives me a positive 7x. And then I've got my negative 2 here dangling on the end. So that is our final answer. So you notice we didn't lose any pieces. It's easy to see where our like terms are at, and I think this is just a fantastic way to get a visual representation. Okay. 
All right, the next one I went ahead and set up the box ahead of time just to give you guys a different visualization of it. So here I'm going to multiply since that's what the problem says. So I'm going to write my 2x minus 1. So you notice I've already got my 2 set up here at the side and the top. Along the top I'm going to write 2x and then plus 1. So I go and multiply these together. 2x times 2x gives me a 4x squared. 2x times positive 1 is a positive 2x. Positive. Negative 1 times 2x gives me a negative 2x. And negative 1 times positive 1 gives me a negative 1. Okay, again I've got some like terms on those diagonals. So here and here. The other two are not though. So my 4x squared, I can't combine that with anything, so that's just a 4x squared. You'll notice a negative 2x, positive 2x, those cancel. So I end up with a negative 1. And 4x squared minus 1 is my answer. You notice this only has two terms, though. Even though we multiplied 2 by 2, well, a lot of times we end up with 3. This time we only end up with two terms. This is called a difference of squares. Keep that in mind, because we'll need that when we go to factor. Um, but anyway, we'll get to that in a minute. Okay, last problem on here, multiply with the box method, and this says x plus 5 quantity squared. Now, if this were x times 5, we could distribute that square, but because of this plus sign in the middle here, we cannot. So remember, when you square something, that means you have to multiply it by itself. So that means I've got x plus 5 times x plus 5. Okay, let me get rid of this little arrow here. Okay, so that means I've got a 2 by 2, so I'm going to go ahead and set up my rectangle and split it in two both ways. So on one side I'm going to have my x plus 5. Along the other side I'm also going to have an x plus 5. So obviously it's the same thing because it's squared. So when you multiply x by x you get x squared. Multiply x by positive 5, you get a positive 5x. Multiply positive 5 by x, you get a positive 5x. Multiply positive 5 by positive 5, you get a positive 25. Okay, again I have like terms on the diagonals, that's why these are so nice, because they set these themselves up really nicely for you. So I've got my x squared, can't combine that with anything. I add a positive 5x and a positive 5x, I get a positive 10x plus my last term here is a 25. And that is your final answer. Okay, so hopefully, you know, again, use this if you like it, don't use it if you don't like it. We are going to be using this with factoring now. So I think it's a good thing for you to practice just to get an idea of what's going on. Now on the second page here I do have some problems. So the first problem says when you use the box method you should see some patterns. Where in the box is the product of the first terms of each polynomial? Okay, so here you'll notice first term, first term, first term, first term. So the way I set up my box it's going to be in the upper left corner. Okay, and ignore all these little lines here, that must have come from above. Okay, so that's the upper left. Where in the box is the product of the last terms of each polynomial? Okay, so I've got, let's see, last term, last term, so that went down here. Last term, last term, that went down here. Last term, last term, that went down here. So I think I'd call that the bottom right. Get rid of some of these here. So bottom right. Where are the like terms located? Well, I think I emphasized that enough. Those are located on the diagonals. And the last one here says, what do you notice about the products of the terms on each of the diagonals? So the key word to this one is products. So that means if we multiply our diagonals, what do we get? So if I multiply an x squared by a 25, I get a 25x squared. If I multiply a 5x by a 5x, I get a 25x squared. 
If I multiply 4x squared by negative 1, I get negative 4x squared. If I multiply negative 2x by positive 2x, I get a negative 4x squared. So the products of your diagonals are the same, are exactly the same. They have the same coefficient and they have the same degree. So again, you know, these patterns are good and we're going to use them when we go to factor. So keep this in mind. Again, practice this thing, look for these patterns each time, and hopefully you can master this method. Thank you very much.